Good morning and welcome to our Sunday service. It's really great to be able to join together this morning um, as we have in previous weeks. Um, if you're joining us for the first time, um, you're very welcome. It's really great to have you with us. Please do um, get in touch if you want to connect with us more regularly. Um, we have been very busy um, running different services on Sundays um, and we're going to tell you a bit more about that now. Um, we have uh, the 9am service, which some of you have, have been to, um, in the building, um, and that's a service of Holy Communion, um, which is open to everybody. Uh, there's no registration required. Um, you're welcome to, to come along to that, um, yeah, if, if you would like to. We also have been doing, um, as you may have noticed, a 10 o'clock service online um, for our children and young people and our families, um, aimed more towards those younger in our congregation. Um, and that has been a lot of fun. Then we um, have been doing this service um, that you're joining us for online um, every week. And then in the afternoon on a Sunday at 4 p.m., we've been doing a, an altogether uh, family celebration um, in the afternoon in the car park outside of church, uh, which again, everyone is welcome to. We are uh, so uh, blessed to be able to gather together um, like this. Um, I'm going to kick off this morning. Um, with uh, our opening prayer. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. So we're now going to join together and sing uh, worship to God.
could the grave You free every captive And break every chain Oh God, you have done great things
merciful God, your Son came to save us and bore our sins on the cross. May we trust in your mercy and know your love, rejoicing in the righteousness that is ours, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us affirm our faith in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Though he was divine, he did not cling to equality with God, but made himself nothing, taking the form of a slave. He was born in human likeness, he humbled himself, and was obedient to death, even the death of the cross. Therefore God has raised him on high, and given him the name above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, and every voice proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Here is the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Read in chapter 18 from verse 21. Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother when he sins against me? Up to seven times? And Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, but seventy-seven. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. As he began the settlement, a man who owed him ten thousand talents who was brought to him. Since he was not able to pay, the master ordered that he and his wife and his children and all that he had be sold to repay the debt. The servant fell on his knees before him. Be patient with me, he begged, and I will pay back everything. The servant's master took pity on him, cancelled the debt and let him go. But when the servant went out, he found one of the fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii. He grabbed him and began to choke him. Pay back what you owe me, he demanded. His fellow servant fell to his knees and begged him, Be patient with me, I will pay you back. But he refused. Instead, he went off and had the man thrown into prison until he, until he could pay the debt. When the other servants saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed and went and told the master everything that had happened. Then the master called the servant in. You wicked servant! He said, I cancelled all your debt of yours because you begged me to. Shouldn't you have had mercy on the fellow servant? Just that I had on you. In anger, the master turned him over to the jailers until he could pay back all that he owed. Now, this is how my heavenly father will treat you unless you forgive from your heart. So, this is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So it's another sermon on forgiveness and sermons on forgiveness are quite tricky. I mean, for a start, if you've been around for any time at all, chances are you've heard a sermon or two on forgiveness. And it'd be easy at this point for you to sit back and think, look, I know where this is going. But then as soon as we mention forgiveness, the other thing is everyone has a story that comes to mind. I know I do. Because this isn't something we can talk about in the abstract. And that's where our reading begins. It begins with Peter asking Jesus a question. Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother who offends me? It's not an abstract question, it's personal. How do I forgive people who hurt me, especially those who are close to me? I mean, Peter's actual brother was part of the group. Maybe that's who Peter had in mind. Or perhaps he was thinking more generally about forgiving his brothers in terms of the family of faith. It's a personal question. And Peter starts with a good suggestion. Maybe I should aim for seven times to forgive. But Jesus says, no, 70 times seven. In other words, I want you to stop counting. You don't get to count how often you have to forgive. And then Jesus gives Peter this story, a parable about the kingdom of God. Jesus says the kingdom is like a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. The king starts with a servant who owed him 10,000 talents. Now, one talent is around 6,000 denarii, and a denarii was about a day's wages. So a talent 
is about 6,000 days worth of work and this guy owes 10,000 of them. That would be 60 million days worth of work. It would take thousands of lifetimes to pay this debt back. It's impossible. But the servant falls on his knees and begs the king to be patient. The king has compassion, releases the debt and lets him go. And that's our first lesson from the parable. The king is merciful, so he has mercy. But then the servant who's just been forgiven that impossible debt, he goes out and he finds a fellow servant who owes him a hundred denarii, a few months wages. Still a large debt, but just a fraction of what the king has forgiven him. Yet he grabs this other servant and throttles him and demands payment for his debt. He refuses to show mercy. And when the king finds out, he hauls this guy back in and he he calls him a wicked servant. He says, I cancelled your debt because you begged me to. You should have done the same for your fellow servant. And the king hands him over to the jailers to be tortured until he pays back all he owed. End of the story. Followed by Jesus' bold statement, this is how my heavenly father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother or sister from your heart. So, we've learned that the king is merciful, and therefore he has mercy, but we now see that the king is also just, so he acts justly. Because the slave who had known the king's mercy hadn't participated in the king's mercy, he would now know the king's justice instead. His participation in the king's justice would be to experience torture until his whole debt was paid. And Jesus said, this is what it will be like for those who don't live in mercy. So it's very clear that Jesus expects Peter, expects us to be characterised by forgiveness. Now, forgiveness is not ignoring or diminishing the offence. It's not making excuses or forgetting about it or saying it was okay. To forgive is to release the debt, to let it go. So forgiveness is different to reconciliation. You need two people to reconcile, but you only need one to forgive, to release the debt. But every time someone does something wrong or offends, it creates a debt that needs to be paid. And there are two options to deal with that debt. When someone hurts us, the first option is to make them pay. So for example, Someone cuts in front of you in the queue. Maybe you try and push them out again. Maybe you glare at them and spout a few choice words. Maybe you just secretly hope that their lane gets held up and the rest of the day gets spoiled for them. What we're trying to do in those moments when we feel wronged and robbed is we're trying to make them pay. What about you? When someone robs you of time or money or reputation or opportunity, when you've been hurt and you feel like somebody owes you, what do you do? Maybe you're harsh towards them. Maybe you gossip about them or you withdraw from them or you act superior to them. Well, in all of those actions, what we're really doing deep down is we're trying to make them pay. So the first option is that we try to make them pay. But there's a second option, which is that we pay it ourselves. We release the debt and we pay the burden ourselves. Let's say somebody smashes my guitar up. I could make them pay for a new one. Or I could forgive that debt and pay it myself. Either I go to the shop and buy a new guitar or I'll pay for it by not playing guitar anymore. Either way, it will be me paying. Or when I see the person later and I choose not to be harsh to them, but instead to be kind, that's another form of paying. When you, when you hold your tongue instead of gossiping, when you don't hurt their reputation, again, it's a form of paying. Someone has to pay, and that's what makes forgiveness so costly. Often we don't want to forgive because we want to make sure that that person has paid for what they've done. We want justice, don't we? And so we we need to recognise that, yes, the king is merciful, but the king is also just. The parable makes it clear that 
that we're all servants of the same king. We all have a debt to be paid. We're all on the same playing field. But some of us are living like the king, trying to settle our own accounts. But it's the king who will make sure every account is settled. And either we will participate in the king's mercy or we will know the king's justice. When we refuse to forgive, Jesus says it'll be like being handed over to the jailers to be tortured until our debt is paid. Justice. It's not hard to understand, but it is difficult to hear. Jesus is exposing what happens if we don't forgive. He's he's making a truth claim about the way the world really works. That not forgiving leaves us pained and imprisoned. A number of studies have shown that this literally is the way it works, that, that when we forgive, it promotes positive mood and we feel more optimistic. But when we don't forgive, that's strongly linked with depression, anxiety, and over time, a feeling of helplessness. Forgiveness releases that. So we need to forgive. And you knew that I was going to say that in this sermon, but it doesn't change the fact that forgiveness can be really hard. Like I said, we can't talk about this in the abstract. It's personal. I have to forgive those who have hurt me. So when we've been hurt by the actions or the words of other people, what's going to help us to forgive, to participate in God's mercy? I think it comes down to faith. We need faith to forgive. We need to trust Jesus. We need to trust the story that he tells Peter that there is a king who is both merciful and just. We need to trust that Jesus is compassionate. That he releases our debts at his own expense. That on the cross, Jesus died for all offenders, betrayers, hypocrites, for you and for me, for everyone. Maybe the reason we find it so hard to forgive others is because we don't really understand how forgiven we are. When we forgive others, it's an act of trusting the king and choosing to participate in his mercy. I recently heard the story of Rachel uh, Den Hollander. Rachel was an American gymnast, uh, talked about in the Netflix documentary Athlete A. At the age of 15, she was sexually assaulted by Larry Nassar. And she was the first woman to publicly accuse Nassar, um, who, because of her and, and so many other strong and brave women, was later found guilty of sexually assaulting around 250 women. When their day in court came, Rachel had the opportunity to settle accounts with this man who wronged her so much. She had the opportunity to talk to him face to face and to make this wicked man pay. This is what she said. In our earlier hearings, you brought your Bible into the courtroom and you've spoken of praying for forgiveness. And so it is on that basis that I appeal to you. If you have read the Bible you carry, you know the definition of sacrificial love portrayed is of God himself loving so sacrificially that he gave up everything to pay a penalty for sin. He did not commit. By his grace, I too choose to love this way. You spoke of praying for forgiveness, but Larry, if you have read the Bible you carry, you know that forgiveness does not come from doing good things as if a good deed can erase what you have done. It comes from repentance, which requires facing and acknowledging the truth of what you have done in all its utter depravity and horror, without mitigation, without excuse, without acting as if good deeds can erase what what you have seen in this courtroom today. The Bible you carry says it's better for a stone to be thrown around your neck and you thrown into a lake than for you to make even one child stumble and you have damaged hundreds. The Bible you carry speaks of final judgment where all of God's wrath and final terror is poured out on men like you. Should you ever reach the point of truly facing what you've done, the guilt will be crushing. And that is what makes the gospel of Christ so sweet, because it extends grace and hope and mercy where none should be found, and it will be there for you. I pray you will experience the soul-crushing weight of guilt 
So you may someday experience true repentance and true forgiveness from God. You need far more than forgiveness from me, though I extend that to you as well. Rachel trusted what Jesus says. Forgiveness doesn't mean forgetting or suppressing. It doesn't mean ignoring or validating. It's not condoning or excusing the wrong. Forgiveness means release. And you and I need it. And Jesus offers it to us. I'm not going to finish this morning by urging you to forgive, although Jesus invites you clearly to do that. But before Jesus invites uh, you to do that, he invites you to receive his forgiveness for you. And so as we worship together now, I invite you to receive Jesus' forgiveness again. To remember how much you have been forgiven. To trust that your debt has been released. To allow God's forgiveness to shape your life and to understand how forgiven you are. Let's pray. Come, Lord Jesus, and do what only you can do. We receive your love and your forgiveness. Remind us of the debt that you have paid for us on the cross. And shape our lives that we might participate in your mercy. Amen.
forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. The Father's arms are open wide. So now we come this morning to our, our prayers. Um, we're going to take spend some time um, praying and listening to God. Um, so if you want to join me, um, either by uh, closing your eyes or, or sitting as you are, um, then feel free. Father, I thank you um, for all of the, the good things that have happened uh, this year in 2020. God, I thank you that you um, have been with us um, through this difficult time. And God, as, um, as the guidance changes, God, I pray that you give us uh, clear eyes um, about um, what we are, are doing, how we are spending our time, what we're doing to socialise. Um, and God, that you would just be with us um, in um, all of our decisions. God, you'd keep us safe. Um, and that God, you would be with us. And Father, I pray for our community, the parish around us, the streets um, of East Park and Eastfield. Um, God, I pray um, that you would be with every person in their houses. God, that you would um, be near to those who feel lonely. God, you'd be peace to those who feel like they're in chaos. And Father, I just pray um, for the schools, um, especially God, that you would and be with the schools that are um, within our parish, be with the schools that are inside Wolverhampton. And God, as uh, decisions are made um, by teachers and head teachers, um, by parents, um, and um, by those uh, higher up um, making decisions, God, that you would just guide um, these decisions. God, that you'd be with um, everybody, the pupils, the teachers, the parents, and uh, keeping them safe um, at this time. And God, we pray blessing on them um, as they um, yeah, have started their term, God, and they're back in the swing of things. And Father, I pray as well for our partners, um, our partners here locally, um, partners um, in the, the UK um, and partners overseas. God, we pray that you would be with um, each of those um, as we are, um, yeah, in this time, God, I just pray that you would be giving um, them all wisdom to, to know what to do um, at this time. And Father, I pray um, for um, yeah the country's leaders, God, the, the, the politi uh, politicians and, and those that are in um, positions of power um, to make decisions. God, I pray that you are with them. Uh, God, I pray that you are um, guiding them and keeping them safe um, and that, God, um, your will um, would be done. And so, Father, I just pray that you'd be with us uh, now, God, that you'd speak to us. Um, as we as we just wait on you for just uh, just a moment. Why don't we join together in the words of the Lord's Prayer? As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. So as we move now to the close of our service, um, it's been really great to be able to join together. We're just going to share some family news and some notices um, for you. So as I said um, at the start, we have the four different services that you're able to join in with. The 9am in the, the morning in the building, uh, the, the family service and this service 
um, online um, on, on the Sunday morning at 10 and 10.30. And then in the afternoon, we have the 4 p.m. service, um, which again, you're all welcome to attend. Uh, we would love to hear from you. Um, we're gonna be sending out a survey uh, probably this week to hear some of your thoughts, um, some of your ideas um, about how we can improve uh, what we're doing at St. Matt's um, and what we're doing well and what we uh, maybe could do better at. Um, we would love to hear your feedback. We would love to hear your thoughts um, about what we're doing um, and yeah, just see, see ways where we can improve um, what we are currently offering. Um, we're gonna move now to a final song and the blessing and dismissal. But if this is your first time joining us, please do connect with us. We would love um, to come alongside you at this uh, really strange and difficult time. Um, and um, yeah, we would love to, um, yeah, just get, get an email going with you or a message on Facebook or YouTube or whatever. Um, and uh, yeah, we'd love to help you in any way that we can. Right, so let's sing now together, uh, Living Hope. Yeah. 
joining us this morning. We're so glad that you've been with us. I just want to pray God's blessing on us as we close our time together. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen.